So Marimo has a fun upgrade now. You can now actually import code from a Marimo notebook into any Python script that you like or any notebook that you like. And I have a little demo of that right here. On top over here, you can see from import me, import uh, this one function. This is a function that's gonna apply a moving average. And then you can see me use this function down below. And just to confirm that this works, I can just run uh, Python, this file. And you can indeed see that I get some sort of a data frame out and that we are applying some sort of a moving average to this one column over here. Now, again, this import me over here that you see, that is actually this one Python file that inside of it just has a Marimo notebook, but it's configured in such a way that you can actually declare functions that you can import into normal Python code. Now, if you want this to properly work, you do have to set up your notebook in a specific way. So what I would like to do is show you how to do that. And then I would also like to explain why this might open up a very useful pattern in general for Python projects. Here's the Marimo notebook in question. And you can see that indeed I've got a chart over here as well as this one slider. And there's some somewhat boilerplate code in the notebook. But the main thing that's important is you can see that I can play around with a slider and indeed see some sort of a moving average update. Down below over here is a bunch of boilerplate that will make the chart and generate the data. But the function in question that really matters is shown on top over here. There is this apply moving average. And that's the function that I'm able to import from other Python code. Now, if you squint your eyes a little bit, you will notice that there are a couple of extra things attached to these two cells on top over here. In particular, notice how this is a reusable cell and the cell above over here, that is a setup cell. And that means that these cells are different than normal Python cells. But the easiest way to explain that is to show you what might happen if I were to maybe move some code around. So what I could do is just start a normal Python cell on top and just move all of these import statements and put them in there. So let's run this. The moment that I do that, you're gonna notice that this cell over here loses that special status. This isn't a function cell anymore. But you are gonna notice that there's a little circle with a question mark that you can hover over. And when you do, you notice a bit of a hint. The reason why this one cell cannot be a cell that you import is because there is a dependency in this cell that needs to move into a setup cell. So what's the deal with the setup cell then? Well, the whole point is that you can just move code in there that's needed to set everything up. And most of the time that means import the libraries that you would need to be around if you wanna have functions like this be exported. And in this particular case, this is a function that uses polars. So polars needs to be declared as a global dependency, so to say. So let's do that. I'm just gonna take polars and I'm going to move that in my setup cell. And the moment that I do this, this cell is able to update and it's able to detect that it's meant to be reusable. Now, before you ask, you might wonder, well, how can I make a setup cell like that? It is a special cell, so you have to be explicit about it. But if you click this hamburger icon over here on top, then if you scroll down a little bit, you will notice that there is this add setup cell option. Uh, just click that and that's gonna add a setup cell. This is everything you need to make this function be importable from another Python file. But one thing to be aware of, if I were to now, for example, add a second function to this cell, then suddenly this cell is no longer reusable. We are quite strict. If you are going to declare a function that you want to use elsewhere, there can be one and only one function inside of the cell. We also allow you to define classes, by the way, and that is something you can totally do. But also in that case, only one class is allowed to go in. So that's everything formally that you have to do in order to be able to import a function inside of another Python module from Marimo. But the very good next question is, well, why would you want to do this? And the simple fact of the matter is that it depends a bit on the kind of code that you're writing. Suppose now, for example, that I'm interested in writing some code that does something with a time series and maybe you want to be able to do something with a time series analysis in hindsight. And a part of that entire chain of analysis is that we do some smoothing. And you can imagine that if you want to find the right smoothing factor, that is to say, I want to have a smoothing factor where, you know, we still capture something of the local behavior. So you could look at this and kind of say, well, there's like two peaks over here that is really just going straight through. And maybe that's not what we want. And, oh, we do kind of like this, but this is stuff that we don't like. So, you know, we have to kind of fool around, fiddle around. I guess a good word would be sometimes you need to eyeball something in order to know the right value. In this particular case, in order to quote unquote eyeball the right value, I need tools around. I need a chart. And in this particular case, the slider also totally helps. But then there's a danger that if at some point I think, well, this looks good, let's uh, store this value 12 over here into our code base, that then I kind of get this split brain situation where I need a notebook in order to figure out this one variable that I need. Oh, but it's a notebook and let's store that someplace else. To me, it feels pretty natural that if you have a single repository with a single Python project, 
that that Python project is self-contained and contains everything that you need in order to understand what is happening. So with that in mind, it's actually a pretty reasonable idea to have these Marimo notebooks in there that kind of serve two purposes. One is there's still just one and only one place of truth, but two, if you really wanted to, you kind of get this second IDE at your disposal that is able to do proper visualizations and interactivity. And for a lot of code bases that I've worked on, that seems like a pretty neat idea. So if, for example, I'm toying around and I've decided that 12 is indeed the right smoothing factor, well, then I can just uh, scroll up here and make sure that the default value here is 12, hit save, and then my entire code base knows what to do. And if something were to change, I can always go back to this notebook, load in some more data, figure out if maybe this factor has to be changed, etc. But there are just lots of these moments when it really does make sense that I have notebooks around for my development. Basically, whenever I'm working with data, there is this moment where, sure, it helps to have some code in the IDE, but never having charts at their disposal, uh, that's gonna, at some point, bite you as well. And having that in one central place, one source of truth, uh, definitely feels nice. So I've actually used this in a bunch of my projects. There's a couple of web apps that I maintain that really benefit from having this notebook around. And I can imagine there's a lot of these code bases that could benefit from this. So it is a new feature. We are definitely eager to get feedback on it. But if you're using Marimo version 13 and up, you are able to use this feature right away. So let us know what you think. And again, I think it's a really nice feature that definitely has some legs to it. So please go ahead and use it.